Hey, brand builder, Rory Vaden here. Thank you so much for tuning in to listen to this interview. We are so excited to bring you this information and wanted to let you know that, hey, there's no sales pitch coming uh, from anything that we do. This is all our value add to you and the community. However, if you are somebody who is looking for specific strategies on how to build and monetize your personal brand, we would love to talk to you. And we offer a free call to uh, everyone that's interested in getting to know us and is willing to give us a chance to get to know them and share a little bit about what we do. So if you're interested in taking us up on a free strategy call, you can do that at brandbuildersgroup.com slash summit call. brandbuildersgroup.com slash summit call. Hope to talk to you soon. On with the show. A while back, I was in a, uh, a, a mastermind, a true mastermind of colleagues, of best-selling authors who got together to spend some time to share some of our secrets with one another. And Bob Glazer is uh, somebody who was there, who I got a chance to meet, who I really have enjoyed following and learning from and watching uh, here ever since. You, know, He is, uh, like me, a practitioner. One of the things I really love is he teaches not so much from theory, but from experience. Um, he's a serial entrepreneur. He's the CEO of a global marketing agency called Acceleration Partners. And, um, you know, he, he has, uh, they've won a lot of different awards for his actual business. The reason I invited him onto this show is specifically for how he built his personal brand, which is something I don't feel like we've had a lot of people come talk about, which is really through writing. Um, he is a regular columnist for Forbes, for Inc., for Entrepreneur. Uh, he really started his brand with something called Friday Forward, which is, a, is very simple. It's a, it's a weekly inspirational newsletter that now reaches over 100,000 people. Uh, he is a podcaster, but also as a writer, he has written um, several books. He's a Wall Street Journal and USA Today bestselling author of four four books. And uh, I just think he's a really great example of somebody using writing to leverage his personal brand. So anyways, welcome to the show, Bob Glazer. Thanks, Rory. Uh, excited to be here. So, you know, what I just shared about you I don't even yeah. you know, know how much you know that that's how I kind of view you as an outsider when I look and go, this is what I see about what you have done. Would you say that's an accurate assessment or, or would you say that you built your personal brand based on something else or other, other no, things? I, I mean, it was, uh, no, I think totally accurate, sort of by accident. You know, it started, it started within our industry. Um, you know, I, I, I always felt like I could communicate clearly in writing and our industry was just devoid of thought leadership. And I started writing stuff that was a little controversial, a little different, uh, you know, people really resonated, you know, with people and our business was strong. And I realized it really set us apart within our industry. Um, and then I, I kind of followed the Cam Harold was a coach and, and Tucker and we, you know, there was no industry book. So we said, look, we're going to, we're going to write the definitive book about our industry uh, and how to use it, um, and, and and really leaned into that. And then along the way, like how we were growing our business and those words that you were saying around culture and stuff, I I be sort of became passionate about how we were. I thought we had figured out some things and leadership and culture, and 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 started to then take that writing and share it outside and 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 you know in articles, getting getting you know byline articles, getting columns, you know related to the books, and then. As you mentioned, the big thing that sort of blew up really unintentionally was a note that I just started sending to my team every week that was getting, that was just about getting better, uh, just about sort of some of the core things I believed in and pushing them to this notion to build their capacity. And, and basically it started getting shared outside the company mm -hmm. to the point where I then opened it up. And when I opened it up, all these people were interested in it and it, and it kind of exploded and then turned into two books uh, later on. So uh, it, it, it wasn't an, <laughs> it, it and wasn't when you an, say, when you yeah. say industry, you're talking about like marketing agencies. Yeah. That part, was, partner that marketing, the, affiliate marketing, like really about like the opportunity within our industry. 
Um, uh-huh. I, I, but, but we always were trying to do our industry better. But part of the way we did that was build a company that focused on development and leadership and people. And so it became almost these two separate trees of topic. And, it, you know, one of the things that I always say, I, because we work in affiliate marketing, and I see people write a lot of stuff to try to make money, right? I, I never, for me, Friday, I actually got a lot of questions. I, I, I never was clear how it was going to help my business, whether it was going to make any money. Mm -hmm. I was getting really great feedback from people and it made me the next week to say, how can I deliver value to this audience that, that, cause I'm making a difference for them and not worry about what I was going to get out of it. And, and probably the best thing I ever did for myself or my business or otherwise, but because, but I didn't have a goal other than to add value to, to the readers every week. How, how long did it take you? Like, so you're at, you're at over a hundred thousand subscribers on this, uh, this weekly. Yeah. It probably reaches about 200 now across LinkedIn and a variety of channels each week across in about 60 countries. Okay. And, and how long, like, when did you start it? Like, how long has it taken you to ramp to five years? And I think like okay. anything I've heard, you've probably heard James clear, like writing's like it rewards the long game. <laughs> like I think, you know, it, it it's a hockey stick of both SEO and, and stuff getting out. You know, it was probably, you know, with, you know, year three to four, I probably added more people than year, you know, one to three. So this is the thing. Whenever I see anyone looking for the outcome before they put in the work, I kind of think you have to put in the work and, and then hope for, hope for the outcome. I, I, I've never found a hack uh, to, to, to doing that. Yeah. I love that. I, you know, the hack thing is like, sure little tips and tricks here are always good but i feel the same way it's like no one no one significant ever hacked their way there uh it was value over the over the long haul now when did um so writing for like forbes and entrepreneur yeah. and inc right those are things that i think really help with credibility and all of that and also search engine optimization and also just reach like there's just yeah. flat out people who will find you there that would never find your own blog. So how do you, how did you get that? And when did you add that to the mix? And like, how do you even go about getting one of those posts? Yeah. You know, a lot of times a book or something, or it, it, it's just a reason to connect with people. And, and I think, um, I had done some work with John Hall and you probably know him and his team. And I, I think they were able to help me. Uh, I was actually at a conference when I met the guy he had been on Friday for, we talked for an hour and he, he, uh, handled some of the Forbes, uh, columns and was able to get me that column. And then it was when I launched, uh, I think my elevate book that part of the outreach and some of the PR connected with the leadership writers, they saw what I was writing about, um, offered, offered a column. And then, you know, it's like anything, once you have one or two, it's much easier to go to the third and say, you know, mm-hmm. I, I do X and Y. I think one of the things that, that the mistakes that I made, I've learned is, is I think sometimes you just try to create too much new stuff, right? I, I could adapt the Friday forward into an ink article and, and, and do a different angle. I learned to take the ink articles and put them on medium and put them on LinkedIn. And I really, in the last year or two, tried to you know, because you some of the commitments on those things it used to be pretty high. You know, Inc. wanted you to write weekly and 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 for free, which is you know, so so it's a lot to do. So I focused on syndication more. I focused on bringing something back from two years ago and redoing it again and reaching a new audience. Um, I, there's always the desire for something you know new and shiny, but I. I, I'll bring back like one of my tried and true, you know, New Year's posts, uh, you know, into into one of my things at, at, at every two years, and it will do just as well or, or better than the first time. So, yeah, you mind sharing with us a little bit about like, do you have a system for how you sequence that, and then also like, you know, are you? I, I know you're saying now that you'll repurpose on more like social, yeah. like you'll, but, or, or but, even something like LinkedIn or medium, right. You can bring stuff back as much as you want. Now, were you having to write unique articles for each of these Forbes and entrepreneur and Inc? Like, like were those, when you first started, yeah, were yeah, those you, all you, new, new proprietary, like you only see this post here. 
Yeah, those have to be new. But then after two weeks, you can take them to LinkedIn, you can take them to Medium, you can take them to other places, right? And there are even mm-hmm. other places that will syndicate them. So you write new for them. But I would also have something where Friday Ford was a certain storytelling format, but I could take just the core essence of that and, and make a, a ink article about it that was different, but on the same topic, right? So just in, in terms of trying to leverage... And a lot of times I know I knew the topic resonated, right? But my, but Friday Ford is a storytelling and Forbes and Inc. are like a one, two, three. So you need to take it and, you know, you got to shift the the format a little bit. But um, yeah, I, I think there are a couple of places, right, that require that it be new. But but I was in the LinkedIn Pulse program earlier, early. Uh, you know, I have a 305,000 followers on the newsletter system there. I think it's the number two newsletter. Um, and, and so obviously that built a little flywheel around, you know, publishing on LinkedIn as, as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I love that. So, so what is your rhythm now? Like how frequently do you think I have to write a new article? Is it still once a week for Friday forward and then everything kind of emanates from that? Or... Yeah, I, I've slowed down the new creation. So right, I, I, I write it on Friday Forward. I syndicate on LinkedIn. I will then, you know, if I'm doing an article for Inc. or Forbes that is timely or something I want to write about, I'll then do that. I'll wait the two weeks and I'll I'll put it somewhere else as well. Um, but I, I I've actually slowed down the new because it it became it be, it, it became a lot. Um, and 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 that was easy to do actually because it got complicated last year to write about things at certain times, just from April to May to June, you just certain topics you couldn't write about and, you know, didn't want to write about COVID stories every, every week. Right. So um, also, you know, you start looking at the data and, and, and what works and where do you see impact from and where do you see, you know, the flip side of this sometimes is you can get caught up with, you might have a column somewhere or whatever, and it does nothing for you, right? You got to kind of look after a year to say, look, for the hundred hours I put into this, should I have put them out? Or should I have created a course or written a book or or otherwise? So I, I've tried to really look at the data and what worked and where are people hearing me from. And, and I'm always sort of culling something every time I, I add something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's true about anything, right? You could spend that time creating TikTok videos or creating YouTube right. videos or creating whatever. But so at your peak, would you say you were writing like, three new articles a week, five new articles was, a week. I was writing about two to three a week. And it was, it was a lot of work. How long did that go on for? That was at least a year or two. Okay. So, so you're doing like two to, at the peak, you're doing two to three new articles a week. And how, for how long were you writing at that frequency? I think about 12 to 18 months to, to, to wow. see if it made a difference. But I, but I had sort of an assembly line. Like I had the ideas, I do the drafts, I have some really good editors behind me and we'd have kind of a bunch in, in, in motion. Uh, like I can write really quickly, but, but editing takes me forever. So that's something I have people that can edit really fast. Uh, so, you know, you need, you need a system, <laughs> I think, behind that in order to do something like that. So, yeah, so I agree. So the ideas thing is interesting because I, I have, um, yeah, I basically write on four kind of f- four topics, all influence. I think of my areas yeah. just influence, but I've got four different topics and each of them, I have a sheet with ideas for posts in each of those yeah. categories. How do you do your drafts? Do you sit in front of a computer and like just type it? Do you talk it out? Do you shoot a video and then transcribe it like i i've had two editors i worked with for years that you know at this point understand me and my writing. So i've actually tried everything except for the video i've okay. done recording and memos i will do like a really deep outline where i'll write a couple of things and i'll say what we need right here is a study or a reference to this point you know and then i have some they'll, they'll research it and grab it for me um so I, i've tried a bunch of different ways honestly as long as you're comfortable with it like, like for me too, like I can get it done fast. It's messy as typos, but I'll just sort of say, look here, I, I, I got this all out. This is a thing. Can you just, can you clean it up, you know, for me? Um, are, are these editors like 
contractors? Are they staff? Are they pro- like were they provided by somebody like else, or did you just like find? Yeah, a I've, I, I've used outside. Um, I think it takes three to six months to get to somewhere where like someone's editing your stuff and they think it's you. I, I've worked with outside, but event, these were staff, so we had a head of content for our business, and then eventually. I, I brought someone on who handled a lot of my personal stuff and writing, mm. you know, was a big part of that. So I, I think there's two people I've reached that level to. I always, I always joke whether if they could write something and send it back to me and I would think I wrote it because one of the things that I, that I do when I'm getting to work with an editor is I make a lot of comments around their edits. So, you know, they like one of my things is I never use things. Uh, I have a thing about sort of superlatives, like, always or never things that be, can be disproven. So if they ever edit with that word, I will say, I wouldn't use this word, right? Like I, I, I'll never use always, I don't use never. Uh, so I, I, I actually will try to comment to them and give them some of my like isms so that as we edit, you know, it gets, it gets better. Uh huh. Yeah. We've, we do a similar thing. Like we've been doing something with very similar with videos where, you know, a video editor will be editing and then it's like, I'll make a comment specific to something I want them to change, but then I'll make a second comment that says about why you want, yeah, why this is. And then we add it to a style guide Roof. that it's like a list of just if you're going to edit f- for me, these things should always be there. I mean, that's interesting, just like the superlatives. And you go, don't ever send me something with a superlative in it. If it, if you are, then that means <laughs> never send lazy. me something that says never. Yeah. <laughs> never send me something. <laughs> um, well, it's fine. So I explain, it- I explain it too. I said, because again, in my writing, I think if you see, if, if you're trying to get to the reader and you say this never happens. And if someone can think, can think of an example where it happens, then you're sort of discredited. Right. So I, it's, I'm conscious to never, never say that. Uh huh. So, so, so you have this process, you kind of idea that you just sort of like puke it out there in whatever format, and then <laughs> you let the editors do it. And you're just kind of like always r- running that production cycle. Well, that's what you did for like 12 to 18 months. Yeah, we had if one do- in early, early development, middle development, like late development, right? And they'd be coming back and forth. Yeah, but if you do 12, I mean, if you're doing three articles a week, let's just say, so that means you're doing you're doing 12 a month. You do that for 12 months, you got 144 articles. Then basically from that point you can repurpose and backlog again, switch things around and you, yeah. you know, brush it up and now you got a stable plus anything. And then, new and, and you, then you go to inspired. write a book or something eventually and you realize that four or five of those articles are key concepts in the chapters of your of, right. of your book. In fact, I'm, I'm doing that for my next book. Now I, I did the outline and I was like, I've talked about this concept before I've talked about this concept before. So, so I'll be able to pull in some of that stuff. Yeah. Plus the data, like what you're saying is going, ah, oh, the readers are really responding to this. It's like, yeah. this needs to be in the book. And you know, you know, the book's going to be a hit before you publish it because you already have the data out there of going, I know people love this. Right. I know they love this. Unless you blow the title, which is, you know, what I learned a lot from you on that, on that. Mm, Yeah, that's pain. (laughs) That is, that is the pain. I mean, it's funny because procrastinating on purpose, that, that is a lot of what ended up in those, that book was, uh, they were, those articles appeared on my blog and they're, you know, like the 30 X rule is this, this section that I wrote. And it's like, I never wondered if my Ted talk was going to be a hit because there it had all been proven before right you know we we messed up the title which was super painful but um and by and by the way in writing and in articles and ink and forbes push this the title might matter five times more than what you write so you get you spend a lot of time on the title and i saw this in ink it to ab test every title and you cannot guess sometimes which title will do better but what they did was they would send out the top 10 articles every month and there's this travel guy and he's number one, two, three every month. And his, his formula is just really clear. So that's where you have to use, you know, Ben Hardy's big on this. You got to use data. And I know for people who are really good writers and purists, they don't like getting into the sort of title and they think it's clickbait. But I always say to people, do you want, you can write the same article and 10 times the amount of people will read it. Everything's going by people really quickly and they need a reason to read that article that day, that hour, because once it passes, they're not going back to it. Yeah. So let's talk about that because, you know, you're referencing the story that I shared with y'all about titles and we've, you know, my second book, which is painful, which we share a lot of our, like a lot of our members know that story, but 
to let's talk about titles. Like, is there anything that you can share that you go, man, this, this works. Like these are general rule of thumbs. Yeah. Actually, can you tell us what should we always do and never do <laughs> as it relates to our titles? Uh, Look, I think you got to get uncomfortable with making it a little sensational. If I look at all, every time they send out the top list, you know, the formula tended to be you referenced a well-known company or name or something, and you said, this is the top reason or what they do or the single thing. Like I, you see that a lot, but every time I get a list of the top performing articles, those titles are already on top of it. So this is, you know, this is the one thing Michael Jordan did to get ready for games. And here's how it can help you. Like those title or, or those titles work. I, it's coming by your desk. You're like, Oh, what's the one thing. And you're not going to get to the one thing until halfway down. Now I, I don't consider that clickbait at all. I consider clickbait when what you get them into the article is not what the article is about or not. It's a bait, like and switch. bait and switch. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't yeah. consider clickbait like something that's a little sexy in terms of, you know, bringing someone, to the topic, but I, but when I get the list and again, if you're ever in ink, it's fascinating. They send out the top performers, this travel guy every month. It's like, you won't believe the one policy change Delta just made their customers love it. Right. He, his title is always something like that. Or United airlines just made this huge blunder and their customers revolted. And, and you know what, even going through that list, I'm like, what was it? I want to, <laughs> I want to, I want to learn what it was. So it's very clear that there's some formulas that, that, that work. So, you know, I really re resonate with this though, because it's like, I hate feeling like I'm pandering, right? Like I hate feel like I'm just, you know, it's, it's like, I don't want to. You're like, I wrote a good article. I wrote but a good here's, article. Here's I, I don't want to wrap someone... it in cheap, what feels like cheap wrapping paper. Correct. But when someone, if you get to the why someone said, what's the point? I want people to read the article because I think it's I think it's good. It's not true, and I think it can help them. Well, if right. you can tell me that one approach will get ten times the people reading it than the other, then then I can get comfortable with you know why I want to do that. Warm as I as I said to my editor sometimes when we're debating titles. I, this this is something that someone in my company said to me like warm cup of tea titles like don't work. They just don't things that sound like mm. eh. <laughs> you know, it's a, could check it out. Like, so, so that travel thing, right? The Delta Airlines made this policy and their customers freaked out. You know, if I said like, you know, this is why it's never good for an airline to change, you know, its policies on its customers without notice. Like, it's kind of like the warm cup of tea version. Like, like yeah, you know, I, I see it come on. I don't really need to read that. It is, it, it is, it is interesting. If it's not a warm cup of tea, what is it? Like, it, what's the... What would you say it is? Is it like the extreme or the like, like what? I, I think that formula is like, is ur, ur, uh, urgent and simplicity, right? Th that's what that formula is. Like you, you want to, it, it's news. You want to read it now. And by the way, there's a, there's a quick, not a quick, but there's a simple takeaway for you. It's always better to have the one thing than the seven things, right? here are the seven keys to success in life versus Bill Gates said, this is the one thing that made him successful in life. Like which one are you more likely to read quickly or think you're going to read quickly? Mm -hmm. Cause you're just yeah. curious. You might just be like, well, what's that Bill Gates? One thing I can look at that quickly, but then I get pulled into the article. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're saying quality article, be okay with a little sensationalism, or you're just saying that's what works, which I agree with. It's like, whether you like it or not, right. that is what is, that so, is what people respond to. So, so, so right. I had to, I had to get comfortable with it because the data is really clear and you're Ugh. in this, you know, if you ever watched a 16 year old days, their phone, you have three seconds to like, you know, get someone's attention as they're going through. I mean, you know, this from books, I always say to you with books, you can have a great launch and a shitty book, or you can have a great launch and a great book. You can you can pump a crappy book up at launch, and then it will kind of crash afterwards, right? Or or if you have great content, or like Hal Elrod, it's not about the launch; it'll come back. But if you have a really great book, you, you will do better if you have a great launch and you get the flywheel going, right? right. I, it, 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 it's it's you shouldn't feel bad about trying to sell your great book if you wrote a piece of crap, you know, infomercial book, then you might feel a little dirty about trying to, you know, pump it up in the book. So this is predicated on that you wrote a good and meaningful article that has value to people.
Uh huh. So as long as it's good and meaningful, then wrapping it in a trashy title is no problem. No biggie. Again, <laughs> I, you said it best. You, you cannot do it, but but the data will show that you'll get maybe a third of the amount of people on it. And in the algorithmic world, you know, the more people that click and read it earlier, the more it gets shown. I uh, know it's it is such a heart. It's a rest, but it's the same thing, right? It's like, what good is the if I have the cure for cancer? What good is it if nobody knows that I have it? Right. Um, but I feel there, there. It's like an artist struggle. You know, this is like a, this is like an artist. I struggle with it, and then the data became so clear to me that I became. Really so you just data was what convinced it. you. You're just like, it doesn't matter. Just the, the the data tells this is clear. It's a strategic decision I just got to make. Yeah, I want people to read my content and get value from it. So if mm-hmm. the title makes them more likely to read it, then. I, I'm going to do that as long as I, I, I don't, I, I, again, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm baiting and switching them or trying to goat them into something. I think that's where it gets a bad name. You know, ones that get you into these 25 clicks or whatever, but you're talking about an article on ink that's been edited. Like it's not, it's not selling you, you know, potion or anything like it. It's just content for someone to read. Yeah. Well, I, um, I like this. This is good stuff. I mean, this is, uh, thank you so much for just kind of sharing, you know, like your, your process, Bob, where do you want people to go if they want to connect with you or learn more about you and kind of like follow, follow up with your work? Uh, sure. I, I've got ever, everything finally <laughs> integrated, um, which I'm sure you'll appreciate uh, at robertglazer.com. So you can get the podcast, Friday Forward books, courses, all the stuff is, is right on that page. It's uh, G-L-A-Z-E-R.com. That is awesome. Well, you won't get warm cup of tea titles. You won't you won't get superlatives, but you will get awesome uh, insight and practical stuff. This has been so great, man. I really appreciate you opening up to uh, let us see a little bit behind the behind the curtain of how you've been using the written word to just really build and, and grow your personal brand. Troy, it was uh, great. Thanks for having me, Rory. Uh, it was a great discussion.